Hi, today I'm going to go over adding a tool to your tool file to give you like a profile. If you're doing like a profile door, if you're doing a specialty route, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of tool files or there's a whole bunch of tools in the tool file by default. Um, but if you needed to add more to it, uh, say you get a custom job that comes through and there's three bits that you don't have in your existing tool file and you just want to just want to have that profile added so i'll give you the walkthrough i'll try to keep it concise um just to give you the points uh kind of the step-by-step -step points to adding this um, this recently came to my attention one of my customers needed some help with this so i just took some time to figure it all out and figured i'd throw it on a video for everybody else so I have, I'm in a project, uh, I'm just in a test route project. I have a couple of rooms in here, but that's kind of uh, irrelevant at this point. The first thing that I need to do is I need to come up with a DWG file that's going to represent the router profile that I'm looking for. So if you go and you look under your help and browse to factory data, um, of course, this comes in very large, uh, multiple screens here. So one jumps in. All right, so just kind of make this a little bit smaller. So when I browse to my factory data, it's pulling in my active library. So I'm, I'm in the 23 um, slash 0210 Imperial Library. So this would be whatever your active library is. Um, I have, if you go into the common data, you can see I have a ton of different options for the library. So I'm in the one that I'm active in, so you would do the same. Under graphics, what you will find is you will find a uh, category called router bits and another one called profiles. The router bits are really all that we're concerned with right now. Um, profiles is actually a different, different area. Um, so these are all ones that are standard. I, I'm not using a customized tool file to like my CNC machine. I'm just using the standard one. Anybody else out there, you know, if you've had the integration and you're going through and you're working with your own tool file that has your tooling in it, you might not see all of these profiles that I see. Um, but this is a good way to get an example of what's going on. So like, you know, here's a simple bit that's going to do a bead. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, uh, a tool. I've, I've done this for testing. I added a tool 134 and a tool 135, I'm gonna do a tool 136. Um, and I'm just gonna save that profile within this location. So I just wanted to show you where the location was. It's under, um, you know, your C users, program data. Uh, I think it's under local microvellum. If you select, if I select this, you can see, you can see kind of that location. Um, and I have mapped this in my drawing so if I were to open up a drawing I actually have it mapped and if I select this it'll go there but because I was just messing with this area I'm already I'm already there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a brand new fresh drawing but I don't want a template associated with it I don't want layers in it I don't want blocks in it I don't want anything I want it to be just a fresh um, file and the way that you do that with Microvellum or AutoCAD really is the portion that we're in right now is you hit this new icon or you can go to file and new either way or control new, control N. And you'll get this dialog box, but see this is prompting me for a template. Well, I don't want a template. I just want a blank file with nothing in it but layer zero. So what I can do is over here on this little drop down arrow, I can drop it down and go into open with the new template no and imperial so this comes in and it's just blank there's nothing in there there's no layers there's no drawing states all of that is blank if i were to go to layers someplace in here is layers you can see it's just a layer zero so here is where i'm going to do my profile for my bit so i'm going to do a, um, just a rectangle we're going to move this in a second, but let's do a rectangle. I want to do a half an inch bit, 
however tall doesn't really matter the the the, the, the height of it um, because we're only going to be cutting you know three quarter inch material or whatever the material may be. Uh, I'm just making this up out of my head. It's not that nothing that I have um, you know in front of me, but you would be just taking your profile and and drawing it in CAD. So I'm going to say let's do dimension and we'll do 0.5 by three. So you can see here's my router bit blank. I kind of think of this like, hey, if this was a piece of steel and I, you know, I'm getting it ready to cut out, how, how would you present the drawing to the steel manufacturer? Kind of the same concept. So the most important thing with this is this needs to be moved so that the center of this, is, the center of the profile is in the zero, zero, zero point of the drawing. And the zero, zero, zero point is where this UCS icon is. So I'm just going to grab this, type M for move, go and hover over the center until I get my triangle midpoint, select it. And now I'm actively moving it, but I want to move it to a specific location. So I'm going to go zero comma, zero comma, zero, which is X, Y, and Z all at zero. And then I'm going to finish that with enter. And now it has just moved me to the zero, zero point within this file. And you can see the UCS icon um, is, is right there. So the next thing I need to do is I need to um, create the profile that I want the, the software to emulate when it's, when it's assigned to a router. Or, or when, it's, when, it's, when, I, when I assign a router to like a profile or something like that. So um, let's just do something maybe simple. I'm going to throw in a circle and just for just for fun, I'm going to throw in a reference so, to show me what three quarters of an inch thick is. And I'll just throw in a circle. And again, I'm just playing. So we'll do a circle with an eighth of an inch. Uh, I think it's diameter. So we'll pop that in. Let's move this up. I'm just going to do a, a radius down here. So we'll just kind of radius the bottom. And then I'm going to just copy this up all the way so that I get like a tooth, like a teeth look. So this will this will make sense in just a second. So I got a whole bunch of circles there. I'm going to do a mirror. And this is, again, going to just match whatever profile you're used to. I'll do a mirror from the midpoint up here. And we'll do a fillet radius. Same thing over here. Okay. So now we'll just do some trimming. So I'll trim this. Essentially, like I said, we're just trying to get the profile that you would essentially send to your tooling professional. Um, but that looks fine. It's very custom. I'll definitely be able to see if it's working. And then the last thing I'm going to do is just join. And I'm going to join all these together and I'm going to create a polyline. Now, for whatever reason, Microvellum likes to have it in a 2D polyline instead of just a polyline. Um, so there's a way to create that by typing in BO, which is like a boundary creation. And we're just going to say, let's pick points and create a polyline. And when I select in the middle of this, because it's a closed polyline, it's going to create a boundary. Now watch, when I highlight it, look, see how this one says 2D? And if I right click and send this to the back, and I select the one that was originally there, it's just a polyline. So I'm going to delete the original one that I just created, and I'm going to go with this 2D polyline. All right, and that's it. This drawing is done. I'm going to save it, and then we're going to, then we're going to add, add it to the tool file. So I'm now going to hit Control S. And because I'm in the same location that I have been in, you know, I don't really have to do anything, but I'm in the router bits area. And I'm going to name this, this, uh, this tool 136. So I'm going to say tool 136. I have a space in between the one and the L. Um, and so this name needs to be exactly matched when you're doing the, the um, tool file. So I'm going to hit save. And we can close this. And um, then what I'm going to do is go into my toolbox setup under options, under tool files, 
and double click on whichever tool file you're using. Now it's always a good idea to make a copy of the tool file um, if you're going to be making changes um, and, and I'm sure you can go on to the Microvellum community to figure out how to do that. Um, this is just a sample thing for me so I don't really care about it as much as if it was my own tool file. But I'm going to go to routers and I'm going to just hit add tool and it's going to add that zero tool at the bottom and when I select it we're going to start naming it. So I'm going to say tool 136. I'm going to browse to the file that I created just a second ago and hit open. And then I'm going to say the common number is 136, the actual number is 136, and the most important thing here is the tool diameter, which is 0.5. If I did that as a weird as 0.375 or something like that, it would be a complex because the drawing is drawn at 0.5. So you got to match that. Now your feed speed and entry feed and all that, all that, or the entry speed and the rotation speed, do, do whatever is standard for you. I'm going to just leave those at zero right now um, because I just want to draw this and see what it's going to look like. So we can always come back and make a change to that later. So I'm just going to, before, um, one thing not to forget is to hit the apply button. So when I hit apply, you'll see that this will save and this will change to tool 136. So that's been applied. And now when I click OK and I click close, now I'm going to test this whole thing out with drawing a blank part and assigning this tool and seeing what happens. I want to see if um, I want to see if that profile is reflected that I drew. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm just going to say I want to do a new room. And uh, I'm just going to right click and hit new room. Room two is fine. Standard drawing template file is fine. Now we could draw a product and I could draw something in 2D and, and, and um, mess around with it. But I, I just want to be clean and, and just have a one single part that I'm playing with to see how it works. And I always find that that's a, a nice way to do things instead of mucking around with a product. And now, you know, we got to pick the door or pick the side and it's all rotate. It's weird. Um, just, just draw a simple part. And I'm going to use, um, I'm just going to draw a rectangle. So in AutoCAD, pick a point, draw a rectangle, 12 by 12. I'm going to orbit this. And then I'm going to, excuse me, and then I'm going to extrude by three quarters of an inch. And this is what I love the solid model analyzer for, for stuff like this is great. I'm just going to say I want to analyze that part. I want it to be three quarter inch MDF. And we'll draw it in the current drawing. We'll just pick a spot over here. So now I just have a simple part. We could have made it whatever size we want, but just a simple part here. And now I'm going to take it and I'm going to draw this down in 2D so that I can add this router bit test to it. So now I'm going to draw just a line. We'll just do a uh, crisscross line here. Maybe you want a diagonal. This doesn't really matter. You could do a you know you could do a rectangle if you wanted to, but let's just do that. And when I open up this 2D uh, drawing file, it, it gives me this added uh, title, whatever this is, tool palette. And now I'm going to go into 2D machining. I'm already on the routing tab. If you weren't, you just select the routing tab. And when I scroll all the way to the bottom, there's my 136 that I added. I'm not going to have it cut all the way through. I'm going to have it only go 5 eighths of an inch. And then we want this to go to the center and I'm going to just pick these existing entities. They should all turn green. And now I'm going to come back to my 2D. Um, well, I've never read that before. Tools, oh, tools and parts list. That looked weird. And I'm going to go to the other tab at the bottom where it says parts list. And I'm just going to right click and hit update current parts and redraw product. And it will draw, and look, there's my custom profile that I just added. And it is seemingly working correctly in all the different routes that I did. That's pretty much it. So one thing I will note, though, 
is say you had an adjustment or something that needed to get changed with this. It's never a good idea to leave that joint open. If you notice when I was finished with it, I saved and closed it. Um, you don't want to leave it open because microvellum can get grumpy with that. But if I needed to make a change to this, like, oh, you know, this is not drawing correctly or something needs to tweak, um, we can open up that drawing file and I can go find it. And then again, this is just, this is just this 2D polyline now and uh, I can come in. I can say, hey, I want to remove, you know, let's convert that to a line. You know, whatever the change may be, I could redraw this in its entirety. It doesn't, you know, it could be a complete redraw and then I would, uh, you know, do do the boundary thing and, and get this. But I just took out a couple of um, arcs here. I'm just by hovering over it and saying convert to a line. So now it's going to be a little bit more like a beaded tool. Now I'm going to hit save and I'm again going to close this and what you'll see is ooh, wrong file. What you'll see when I redraw this, I'm just going to hit redraw. Nothing is going to happen. See, nothing happened. However, if I were to cut this, um, it would, I mean, it would cut correctly because that's the router bit that I'm calling for, but it's not drawing correctly. And there's a reason for that. The way that it creates this profile is it imports in the drawing that we were just looking at the tool 136 drawing. It imports it in as a, um, as a block. So in AutoCAD, once a block is in a drawing, it's going to always come in that same way, even though the original file that was done is changed. You need to you need to override or you need to like redefine that block. And there is a way to redefine it using tool palettes, but there's also another way to do it is by purging out that block. So I'm going to type in PU for purge, or you could write out purge, but I'm going to say PU for purge. This is a, a newer dialog box. Um, I think it's 2021 or two that came out. Um, but I'm going to select the plus sign next to blocks. And look, right down here at the bottom, I see tool 136. But look, it's my old drawing. So if I just right click on that and hit purge and close. And now I go back and I say I want to redraw it's going to redraw and it's going to come in with the proper uh, or with the updated profile because now that um, that block has been removed and then re, re added in. So if I type in PU again and I go to blocks, now you can see the, the right drawing there. Um, so anytime you make a change or an update, you need to purge out that block and then draw it again. Um, but that's going to give you what you need to create these custom tools uh, or custom profiles within microvellum. Now, if I wanted to do a profile around the border, uh, you know, I would I would put a rectangle in that 2D drawing, and I would say, okay, I want to select it, and I only want it to go, you know, three eighths of an inch in, and maybe it's an OG profile, whatever it may be. This will give you the ability to create those profiles within that drawing router bit area and then um, create a tool for it and assign the tool to your part. Hopefully this helps. Uh, thanks for watching.